my favourite thing that I've ever done and the thing I am best known for is a clip from BBC One's The Big Questions which went completely viral under the name, which I did not invent, uh, Atheist Bitch Slap. Uh, and it's me arguing with some conservative religious individuals and it's it's been translated into dozens of different languages anywhere I go in the world still. Even though it's 10 years ago, people come up and ask if that, you know, is that me? And I've had 20 marriage proposals sent to me by people who have seen that clip, uh, including the most recent one was from a woman. So it's nice to know I'm appealing to a broad spectrum of the population. Yeah, it's interesting that every man is going to have two wives. That means there have to be twice as many women who believe this as there are men. Otherwise, there won't be enough to go round or we'll all have to marry more than one or something like See, this. When I watch these clips, all I think is, didn't I used to have great skin? <laughs> it's, so, it's so long ago. Please watch these clips respectfully. Focus on what I'm saying. Don't be going, look how great your skin was back then. Um, also, I constantly do this. It looks as though I take a lot of coke, but I assure you, only a reasonable and moderate amount. I'm, I am joking, I don't do hard drugs. So, yeah, what yeah. is interesting here, actually, is that we've got people from different faiths and, and, the, and who all believe in some kind of heaven in a different sense. Um, but every single one of them believes in this heaven on the basis of faith. And faith, by definition, is believing in things without evidence. And uh, personally, I don't do that because I'm not an idiot. Oh, whoa, ow! The best thing about the bitch slap is the woman behind me who is clearly religious and just, and just manages to maintain a sort of complete poker face, a sort of disgusted poker face the whole way through and just sort of looking around like what is going on. It must be quite weird to be in one of these shows when you know they can see you. It's actually, it's actually one of the things about going on Question Time. If you're ever on Question Time, here's my top advice to you. They are filming all of the guests all of the time and that means that what you can't do is get caught when um, someone is saying something unreasonable going mm, mm, mm. so if somebody is saying something it's like if some right-wing politician is saying something awful and you are one of the other guests on question time you have to do this <laughs> it should be like a, an outtake reel of question time guests trying desperately to look continuously unhappy my second favorite tv moment and this one was just for pure fun I was asked to do a Sky News debate on the gripping, vital, contemporary political subject of is it okay to wear pajamas to Tesco's? Yes, that's right. That's what you. That's what your TV package is for. And so, I did this. Uh, let's talk to the man who's dubbed Britain's youngest manners expert, William Hansen, and comedian. They start talking about whether it's okay to wear pajamas to the supermarket. And then they cut to William Hansen, the other guest. Incidentally, also like the poshest guy you have ever met in your entire life. And, and he starts, he, and he basically is there to say that, oh my goodness, no, you should always dress formally when you leave the house. It's so sloppy and suddenly. Um, but what I've done, because I don't care, is uh, I've gone on air in my pyjamas. And they haven't seen me coming because I'm in a different studio to the rest of them. And then they all kind of slightly lose it. And even though my pyjamas, in fact, have a nice collar on, so really, if anything, I'm the most smartly dressed one of the lot. So my third favourite thing that I've ever done on TV is when I was on Piers Morgan's Good Morning Britain show, and we were actually on to talk about uh, January and whether or not you need to shave your armpits as a woman, obviously, as a man. This question is never asked, for one must simply do whatever one chooses to. But they were there to, should women shave their armpits? And Piers Morgan made the mistake of asking me what my boyfriend thinks, which is already a stupid question. Oh, hello, woman, I understand you've made a choice about your life. What do men think? Like, actually, I don't make all my choices based on whether it gives somebody an erection. Thanks for checking, Piers. Interesting, interesting question to open with. No, I'm totally cool with that. It's interesting um, that the reaction is often, oh, but won't men find this unattractive? So first of all, thanks for checking. I'm fine. Uh, as regular viewers of your show will know, I'm polyamorous. I have several boyfriends. Uh, what I did beyond. say was the actual issue at hand, which was that which boyfriend? I am fairly widely known to be polyamorous. I date more than one guy. And uh, this completely threw Piers Morgan. And he then... Um, 
He then basically didn't talk for about three minutes and Susanna Reid had to do the whole of the rest of the interview while his brain was just like, what? Processing? I don't understand. Are you all in the same room at the same time? Now I've pictured it on daytime TV. It's all, how do I get one of these? I'd like to be involved. And then he sort of starts to ask me like who I spent Christmas with. And as it happened that year, I'd spent Christmas with some friends and also two guys that I'd date. Then he was like, so who did you wake up with? And it's, you're like, it, I mean, first of all, it's daytime TV peers. And I can't say drowning in cock, so thanks for asking. But secondly, um, it's none of your business. And we're here to talk about armpits. The point I think we're getting at is, do my, does my failure to shave my armpits in some way hinder my love life? And the answer is no. So Russia Today put me on air with Stephen Green from Christian Voice like they didn't know what would happen. And the, the point of the piece was to discuss whether or not God should be referred to in gender neutral terms. And quite obviously, I don't care because God is fictional and I couldn't give a hoot. But, I, but with the benefit of hindsight, I had this like spare punch going. And fortunately, we were not in the same studio, so no actual violence erupted. But it just seemed to me like it was the right moment to take him to task for some of his previous actions. I, I don't case. understand how we can have a conversation okay, okay. about gender and not address the fact that we're talking to a wife, Peter. Okay, we do not need to get... We have to understand that there are people today who have had either a negative experience with their own father or no experience at all, no father there. And we do tend to... Uh, Oh, if there were Oscars for eye rolls. <laughs> this is such... This is such a... Oh, so I look so angry, which was actually just from this argument I'd had the night before. Well, it's just a bad day to put me next to Stephen Green, wasn't it? Kate, yeah. are things perhaps moving too far too fast? Oh. Could this be seen... Anytime the presenter has to ask, are things moving too far, too fast? You're like, yeah, we should get rid of prejudice slowly, shouldn't we? Human rights, don't install all of them in a hurry. Goodness me, no. Like, one at a time, or you're just overloaded. Oh, there are too many human rights. When I was on Question Time, I just trusted the makeup woman to do whatever she thought was sensible. And then afterwards, The Telegraph wrote an article describing me as a goth. <laughs> and then for a while, that was on Wikipedia. Kate Smurthwaite is a British goth and political comedian. <laughs> like, well, if it's been in The Telegraph, it's a fact. But I think the makeup woman was just a little bit heavy handed with the eyeliner. I don't, I don't really think of myself as a goth. Um, but, you know, sure, why not?